In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a use active hook in ReactJS. So a use active hook is pretty essential if you want to detect the user activity or inactivity in a web page. So as you can see on the screen, if I move my mouse, it says user is active. And if I stop moving my mouse, then after a second, it says the user is inactive. If I move, it says active. If I leave, then it says inactive. If I click anywhere, then it says active. Then it, after a second, it says user is inactive. So this is pretty essential because if you want to show some content when the user is active on the screen or you want to display some different type of data or show some animation whenever the user is active, then you can do that by the help of this hook. So in this video, you'll also get insight on how custom hooks are built. So let's get on with the video. So as you can see over here, I have a pretty basic setup over here. I just cleaned up the app.js file and I just have this text app written over here and I have this app.css file where I'm just centering everything out. And I have this uh, hooks folder within which I have this use active hook.js where, where all the main functionality is going to be added. This is our custom hook which we will use in this app.js file to bring in that effect. So alright, so first of all I'm going to go to my use active hook.js file and we are going to start making the custom hook. So first of all, all we have to do is we need to export a function and let's name, let's call it use active all right and this is going to be a function and over here on top we have to also import some of the um, react use state and use effect use effect use state and i'm also going to import the use ref and you're going to see in a minute like why i'm doing all this and over here i have to pass the time argument because as we saw in the demo after a second the user is active changes to user is inactive so this time is going to help us do that so now let's go on and build the function so first of all what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a use state variable i'm going to say set i'm going to say active and set active and i'm going to equate this to use state sorry my bad use state and i'm going to initialize it with false after that i'm going to make a timer and the timer is going to have use ref assigned to it and after that i'm going to make an array of events so this array of events will have all the events which when activated i want the user to become active so what i mean by that is i'm going to add all such events over here all such mouse events just key press mouse move so these events when fired will detect that the user is active so i'm going to write touch move and i'm also going to write click event and then i'm also going to add the scroll event so for all these events whenever the mouse moves or clicks or so on the user should be active all right so now all i'm going to do is i'm going to go and make my use effect function and i'm going to just run this once and over here at the bottom i'm just going to write a return because we would want to clean up everything all the events that we set above in this uh, use effect uh, we'll get to this part later so first of all, what we need to do is we need to loop through each of these events over here in this event array. And then we need to attach all these events. We need to basically attach a listener to these events and attach a function to those listeners. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say events dot for each. And then this will take an event and then document dot add event listener and i'm going to say the particular event which is key press mouse move and so on and i'm also going to attach the handle event function all right so now in this handle event function we are going to add the main logic so all i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this and i'm going to make this function over here it's going to be an arrow function now this handle event function all it does is since over here we are adding the event listener for each of these events so whenever we do any of these events this handle event is going to be called right so all we need to make sure is in this handle event whenever any of this event is being triggered we will make the set active to true all right so what i mean by that is when handle event for a particular event is triggered we will go ahead and make the set active to true and then after this i'm going to go down here and i'm going to say timer dot current i had declared the timer variable over here which is a ref i'm going to say window dot set timeout and then within this timeout function i'm going to set the active to false pretty simple right and then over here i'm going to give it a time which is passed from our argument up here so basically what happens is once the time that we pass gets over the set active will become false 
and before this happens we also need to make sure if there is there is any previous timer that exists or not right so if the previous timer exists then we just need to clear it out so if timer.current exists then we have to do window dot clear timeout and we will we'll clear the timer dot current all right and then in the end all we need to do is um that is at the end of the use effect after the use effect we need to return the active because based on whether this active is true or false when we use this in our app.js file we will detect or we will you know perform a functionality if it's if active is true that means the user is active if it's false then the user is inactive and based on that we can do any action that we want now over here within the function that we are returning in the end in use effect all we need to do is we need to remove the listener which we are attached for the events right so whenever the component unmounts we need to make sure those listeners are also removed so all we have to do is events dot for each so we need to remove the e we need to remove the listeners for each of those events which were triggered so we'll just go through each of those events itself and then we will just do document dot remove event listener and we will take that event and we will say handle event all right so here we are removing all the event listeners whenever we unmount and here we are returning the active so it will always tell us if any of these events are true or not so and over here whenever we handle the event we are always checking if the timer exists or not currently if it does then we'll obviously want to clear it out because that timer will be for the previous event and we don't want to use that we will clear that out and we don't obviously want multiple timers to get batched you know so we'll clear this timer out we'll create a new timer and assign it the time which we are passing from the argument up here now how to use this hook we have created this hook now how to use this hook and also one thing you should remember is whenever we create a hook it's always good to name it like this use active or use window anything any name that we give to our hook it should be having this use written before it that's the general convention which is followed all right so now let's go and try to use this we are going to go to our app.js file and over here i'm going to first of all import that hook use active from it's over here in the hooks and the use active hook and now i'm going to remove this app text that we have and within this step i'll just add some jsx so that we can properly see what's happening whether the user is active or inactive so first of all the main thing in this file is we need to call this use active function that we had created right the use active hook basically which returns us that active over here so this tells us whether um, the particular event is true or not right so how do we do that we just declare any name let's name it active and we, we call use active and we pass the time that we wanted as the argument so in this case we'll just keep 1000 milliseconds so now just to show you that this use active for clearly works and that this active really returns us true or false based on the event i'm going to just import the use effect and i'm going to show you that i'm just going to console log and show you that it really works so over here i'll just create this use effect i'll just remove this use effect after i show it to you within this i'm going to say console.log and i'm going to console log the active that we created on top and over here i'm going to set the dependency as active so every time active runs we are going to go to console log this and now if i open the browser and go to my console I'll just clear all this out you can see if i move my mouse it says true if i stop it says false after a second if i move my mouse again it says true if i stop it says false and so on so as we can see this clearly works the active variable that we have returns is true or false based on the event that we have and actually just to show you another event if i go to my browser over here and i open the console i'll just clear all this out and if i uh, let me just stop it says false if i click you can see for the click event also it says true and if i after a second it says false back again so if i click is true and if i after a second it says pause if i click again it says true after a second it says false and if i move it also says true and if i stop then it says false so so now i'm just going to remove this use effect we don't need it and then over here i'm just going to add the jsx that we required i'm going to say class name and this needs to be dynamic so i'm going to say if active is true then let's use the class name active else else we're going to call it inactive all right and now within this diff all we just need to add a ternary operator and say if active then say user active else say user is inactive 
all right very simple stuff and i'm just going to add the styling for this div it's pretty simple i'm just going to go down here i'm going to say dot active sorry my bad active and i'm going to do the same for the inactive as well to say font size is 30 px and then the padding is 10 px and then the background color is red the width is 200 px the color would be something like white that would be the text color and the text align can be set to sorry text align can be nothing but center all right so now we have the styles set it up and now if i go to me, go to my browser then here you can see user inactive i'm not seeing the border radius actually you can add the border radius not a big deal 5px I save it and there you can see now if i move my mouse it says active if i stop moving my mouse then it says user is inactive if i click it says active then after a second it changes to user is inactive so yeah that's all for this tutorial i hope you found this hook pretty useful you can use it for a lot of stuff and i hope you also got an idea of how custom hooks are created in react so if you found this video useful don't forget to like and subscribe stay tuned for more